The world's first recognized cruise missile is the V-1 developed by Germany during World War II, but this statement is not very precise. Strictly speaking, it should be the world's first cruise missile with practical combat value, because there were other immature models before it, and Britain had been working on this for more than a decade. The idea of developing cruise missiles appeared during World War I, 1914-1918. Both Britain and the United States were very interested, but it wasn't called a cruise missile at the time. Americans called it an aerial torpedo, and a more famous model was the Kettering Bug. The Kettering Bug was developed by the United States. The Army requested that the aerial torpedo be able to strike a target 40 miles away, about 64 kilometers. In October 1918, the first flight test was conducted. It was actually a radio-controlled aircraft, weighing about 240 kilograms, with a biplane structure and powered by a 40-horsepower V-4 two-stroke engine. Theoretically, it could fly the torpedo at a speed of 80 km per hour and had a maximum range of 75 miles, about 120 km. It carried 82 kg of explosives and would explode upon impact with the target. The Kettering Bug did not have landing gear and was mounted on a simple four-wheeled cart on a sliding runway. Its guidance system was very primitive, using a simple mechanical method. Before launch, the distance between the launch point and the target needed to be calculated, and the total number of engine revolutions needed for the aircraft to fly that distance would be set. The mechanical equipment would then shut down the engine and retract the bolts on the fixed wings upon reaching that value, causing the body to detach from the wings and land by inertia before exploding. This mechanical control method was not reliable, and at the time, the precision of the precision instruments was not sufficient. The gyroscopes used to stabilize the aircraft's flight path did not meet the requirements. The flight test results were not ideal, and the plan was cancelled in the 1920s. Unlike the Americans, the British initially pursued a more advanced route of radio guidance. Of course, this was a difficult path at the time. The first product was the RAE Larynx in 1925. RAE stands for Royal Aircraft Establishment. The Larynx was a ship-borne cruise missile theoretically capable of conducting land attacks or anti-ship operations. The Larynx appeared to be a monoplane with a cruciform tail and was powered by a 200-horsepower radial engine at the front. Its sleek and simple design gave it a high flight speed, reaching 320 km per hour, faster than some fighters at the time. It had a maximum range of 300 miles, about 480 km, and a warhead weighing 250 pounds, with considerable explosive power. The takeoff method for the larynx was similar to the early cruisers launching seaplanes, with the aircraft mounted on an upward sloping track and propelled by a rocket. So, how effective was the larynx? With the electronics technology at the time, it wasn't very effective. Britain conducted six live-fire tests, with the first four launches from a destroyer. In the first test, the larynx crashed into the water not long after takeoff. In the second test, the larynx was lost, estimated to have flown about 100 miles. The third test was the most successful, with the larynx landing after flying 112 miles, only 5 miles from the target. Honestly, the larynx could only be considered a technical exploration. Its limited warhead and inaccurate guidance equipment made it challenging to use for bombing cities, let alone for precise strikes. However, this does not mean that Britain did not achieve any results in this field. The Fairy Queen and Queen Bee were successful examples. Around 1930, during anti-aircraft gun training, manned aircraft were often used to tow target drones. In these situations, anti-aircraft guns were prone to friendly fire. Based on the larynx, Britain attempted to develop remote-controlled target drones. The Fairy Queen was built in small quantities for testing, using a modified existing biplane, while the Queen Bee was a real and large remote-controlled aircraft. About 400 were built, and they were still used to train soldiers during World War II. Some called it the Mother of Drones. In 